Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the March Enterprise Risk Management Toolbox webinar. A couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. If you've dialed in by phone but haven't logged in by web and you would like to see the slides that will be shown, please point your web browser to readytalk.com. In the box where it says Participant, Join a Meeting, enter the same access code that you used to join the call, 987-9821. Uh, we are leaving the phone lines open so that you can ask questions as they come up. Please stay aware of the level of background noise in your area, and if it starts to become noisy, please put your phone on mute. If your phone doesn't have a mute button, you can use the ReadyTalk controls, which are star 6 to mute and star 7 to unmute your line. Uh, if you are called away from your phone, please do not put it on mute because that will cause your whole music to be transmitted to everybody else on the call. You can simply hang up, dial back in when you're available, and it will not disrupt the call. Uh, with that, let me introduce our presenter today. Ron Cortez was appointed as Associate Vice Chancellor for Administrative Services in March 2008 at UC Santa Barbara. He oversees Accounting Services and Controls, Administrative Systems Program Management Office, Audit and Advisory Services, Environmental Health and Safety, Human Resources, Information Systems Office, and the Police Department. In addition, he has special responsibility for campus emergency planning. Before joining UCSB, Mr. Cortez was the Senior Deputy in the Santa Barbara County Executive Office. Ron, let me hand the controls over to you now. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having us. And so uh, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know, next to me here I have Carrie Franson, who's our ERM coordinator, who will ask uh, some specific questions and help me along with the presentation. Begin. Okay. Perfect. Well, first of all, before we begin, could could anyone who's having a little noise on the line mute their phone, please? It's just getting hard to hear. Thank you. I'll also be monitoring the phone lines and muting any individual ones that we have problems with. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, perfect. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having me and uh, to being able to have the opportunity to talk about communicating with of ERM. So I. Find, I really wanted to do this presentation just because I find this uh, this area of risk and determining the risk upon the campus both quite fascinating and I think it's actually very helpful to an organization. So when I first arrived at campus, I had somewhat of an understanding of what ERM, but not a complete understanding. And so I know when we were asked by the Office of the President to take this on, there's lots of confusion here on our campus about, well, what is ERM? How do we approach it? Um, what's sort of the game plan? And bringing this out to the campus, one of the difficulties of bringing it out to the campus is that in the past, this had been tried before, but never actually successfully executed on our campus. So some people thought about ERM as well. We tried it before. Uh, to some people would say, well, that takes a lot of work and energy and time and people, and of course we don't have any of those right now since we're understaffed. And third, people would say, why do we have to do ERM when we pretty much know what all the risks are on campus? But I think the ERM framework uh, can actually exist even though we have uh, a reduction of resources and that we may think that we know all the risks that are occurring. And through this presentation, we can talk a little bit about why, uh, why I believe that's possible. And I'm sure many of you have had successful encounters and implementations with ERM, and it would be good to hear your perspective as well. So I think it, as we go through this presentation, why don't we open it up for questions during each slide, and then we can just move forward instead of holding the uh, questions to the end, if that sounds okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about uh, the belief and the goal of making everyone a, a risk manager and finding yourself less prepared to describe to your colleagues the value of ERM. That's one of the goals of our uh, meeting here today, and the fact that. I think it's good for us to have champions around the campus in order who can describe the benefits of ERM and sort of get it as part of, uh, as part of our culture of the organization, that it's important to identify risk 
and some of the benefits. And I'll describe to you a bit later of one I believe that was helpful to us with our financial system and how we sort of use that to get people interested in ERM. Um, let's see if there's anything. I won't highlight everything on these slides because I know you can read them and you can go back to them uh, uh, later. One of the other things, is that the last bullet here is this session we'll discuss responses. I think one of the things that is set up very well by the Office of the President and the, we've been able to use is this risk uh, register. And the way that we've been able to uh, combine that with the use of CARI, our ERM coordinator, and also our uh, auditor. Uh, so that we avoid duplication, but that we get a better comprehensive understanding of our risks on our campus. And I think that's actually been quite successful. I encourage others to approach it that way as well. Okay. These other slides, again, I'm not going to read all of these to you because most of you already are familiar with these, but this is just the basics of the COSO ERM framework in the four areas. And this is also the four areas when we are actually doing our surveys and actually discussing risk at our ERM steering committee. These are the things that we're looking at. And then again, the uh, COSO ERM framework uh, talking a little bit about uh, these objectives in more detail. So here's one of the questions you may get this question, well, we already know our risk. Why do we need an ERM? And so I'm going to give just an example of how I believe this actually worked well on our own campus in answering this specific question. So uh, Carrie, who has done a really good job here on our campus along with the auditor, uh, took this uh, approach, which I think is quite successful. So we basically have the uh, auditor, uh, Carrie, and we also have our compliance officer uh, who works for the executive vice chancellor working together as a team to, uh, through surveys, um, through interviews, and other mechanisms, compiling all the risks that we have here at our campus into um, sort of a, a summary of results. That then we actually have an ERM steering committee which is a smaller committee made up of people from student affairs, made up of people from administration, all walks of the campus, but it's rather small. And this group is the one who sort of coordinates. They look at these uh, risks and they discuss them. And so one of the good things about this is that no one division or no one department appears to have the understanding of the risk to the entire campus. So an example I will use is that we were looking at our financial system here on our campus. And our financial system is about 40 years old. And we had talked many years about sort of the need to replace it. But it wasn't until we had the ERM system we could take a look at the risk, not only just to the administrative services division, but that the risk that this financial system would have on the entire campus. For example, it would affect our ability to conduct research. It would uh, affect our ability to handle issues with student affairs. And so we were able to discuss all the risks that would be involved, not just in our own division, but throughout the campus. In addition to that, when we had this conversation, other divisions spoke up as well. So for example, student affairs had a lot of uh, student systems their student system was older and being replaced as well. And we sort of compiled a whole list of significant IT systems that put our campus at risk. And so while well, each division knew of a system which we believe was risky to the campus, until we all got together and talked about it, did we know that this was going to be a significant risk for the entire campus, all of these systems as a whole. And I really think that that's one of the that's an example of how well people and staff or faculty believe that we understand the risk. They only may only understand it from our own perspective. And it's not until we gauge into a discussion with other members of the campus 
Do we really fully realize and understand the risk as a whole? And I think that's one of the biggest benefits of having a process of ERM so that you can understand things not only as you see them, but in listening to others and understand the risk that they have and compiling them into a uh, risk register and compiling them into a format where they can be discussed and then later, more importantly, not just discussed, but actually addressed. So before I move on from this slide, are there any questions on this slide or any questions on the example that I just gave? No, but thank you. Okay. Move forward. But this is really just an example of, of a slide that talks about it, provides the big picture uh, that you're able to see uh, huh. this from all <laughs> of it. That's sobering. <laughs> okay. So here's the, uh, the framework that we uh, provide the framework to communicate and develop strategies and ERM increases ability to respond more confidently to existing emerging challenges and silent versus ERM. I think the example that I used though, we actually had two experiences with ERM. My first one was not so good. In fact, I was lucky I was near the door so I could exit quickly before I was harmed. <laughs> but I remember bringing up the ERM at the first meeting and talking about how we would go about performing this these, uh, this workload or approach to ERM, uh, we brought in a lot of people. I brought in sort of basically all the key stakeholders from the campus and put them all in one room and talked about this and we gave them training for a while and we talked about how we needed people's input, uh, prioritizing, identifying and prioritizing risk and people were somewhat, and actually they were quite angry uh, about having to take on another project especially without the workload. People talked about hiring additional staff. People talked about they didn't understand it. So we, ch we changed approaches after that. So we called the, a timeout to the meeting and we sort of regrouped. And we have, we decided we would have a smaller steering committee. I mentioned earlier, only has it has the auditor, it has the controller who leads this uh, with our ER coordinator, uh, Office of Research, IT. and the yeah, IT, and who else is in there? I think that's the first. Oh, right. And also our EHS director, and that is our steering committee. Everything that we do goes through our steering committee because it allows us to sort of about how we're going to present these issues to our larger uh, stakeholders on campus. So that way we can sort of go through and talk about how are we going to survey, what were the results of the surveys, what do we suggest as priorities for the campus, um, also uh, how, do we start, how are we going to present these to the uh, rest of the steering committee. And then once we take them to the steering committee, who is larger, who is made up of all the stakeholders on our campus, and a few senior officers who are in that too, which is in our larger committee, we also have the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, the Vice Chancellor of Research, and so we are able to mix uh, technical people with senior officers as well. It's at that group that we make formal decisions for our campus. And it's at that group we actually say, yeah, we agree with the type of risks that have been identified on our campus. And we normally, generally try to prioritize them the top three. And we generally then try to figure out some kind of work plan in order to get these things moving. So getting back again to this, uh, this financial system, we kept an eye on it to figure out, well, what is actually happening with it? How are we uh, progressing? Are we seeking proper funding? Are we developing a work plan to address it and what's the status. And so we tried to change, we actually had at the beginning, we had red, yellow, and green with our top three priorities being red and that's where the financial system came out. Uh, and then that's when we also developed a work plan for addressing these uh, in the future. Later lab safety came out as one 
even before there was an issue <coughs> at UCLA, we talked a little bit about uh, lab safety, and we've talked about issues with research, and we've talked about mental health issues with student affairs. All these kinds of issues have come out of these discussions. And so I think they're actually quite, quite good for the campus just to have in general. The way we go through that discussion, um, we actually use a system. What's the name of the system where they get to vote by a option finder? Option finder. And so Carrie does a good job, and she prepares sort of the initial results from the um, from our steering committee, and then every person in there gets to vote using Option Finder. And then we have a discussion. We listen to everyone's viewpoint, and they vote again, and then we uh, discuss again and vote one more time. So it's a, a really good way for the campus to engage in this discussion and then finally come up with something which is a meaningful result, which means we're actually tracking some type of progress towards these. Uh, addressing these risks. So are there any questions on that? We have a quiet audience here today. Do you have anything you want to add, Carrie? Okay. Your material is so crystal clear. Oh. Let's see. Uh, knowledge is power. So um, this is just the part where I think it's an, the advantage. This is an advantage of ERM versus just knowing the uh, risk for the campus is that engage that engagement of the and discussion of the risk, which lets people such as our senior officers know about the issues with our financial system, student system, mental health issues, really is helpful because when we're then discussing them at other meetings throughout our campus, or when we're looking for funding or resources, these kind of decisions have a have been taken place at sort of the highest levels in the organization. They've also heard them and listened to them from people who actually deal with these on a daily basis and understand them um, uh, you know, in more detail. And so that's uh, helpful. So especially one of the issues that's been on our radar scope is the issue of mental issues and so, uh, or mental health issues on our campus. And that's helpful for us to be able to engage in that discussion as well. All this is more <coughs> of the advantages, <coughs> excuse me, of the actual process of ERM versus just saying a person or two saying, I already know the results and I already know the risk, so why go through this? It's the engagement of others to make sure the campus is understanding these and to debate sort of the issues as well. ERM is a value proposition. I think one of the biggest, uh, I'm not going to read the slide, but I think one of the biggest advantages of ERM is that it helps us to think about uh, what our risks are in the future. So it's actually doing some type of planning for an organization so that we can try to figure out how to address something rather than just waiting for an incident that has occurred and figuring out how to fix that, fix that one that's already broken. So in that case, it may be a bit late, but the issue is can we fix things before they've actually uh, occurred to such a critical stage that then it is a crisis, but we're looking to try to find those things that are uh, out there in the future. I think it's difficult for all of us to try to address these issues that require a lot of money or resources just because we're in an environment where we don't have a lot of money and resources. But then I think the challenge for us, all of us who are on the conversation here today, is how to break those projects up where we can take small steps in order to reduce our um, level of risk and also bring those issues up to a higher level to get more resources and a plan to have them addressed. So I think that's one of the biggest values is to be able to try to plan and address issues in the future. So are there any questions at this point? Ron? Yes? Yes, I have a question. This is Mark Meany, uh, Director of Ethics and Compliance with OP. How are you today? Doing very well. Thank you so much for your presentation. I just had a question about the relationship. Uh, I know that uh, Gene Lucas, for example, is the, uh, uh, the uh, Campus Ethics and Compliance Officer and he chairs the Ethics, Compliance, and Audit Committee. And the ERM committee reports up to that, that more senior level committee. And I'm wondering how the two interact 
in addressing risk assessment? Uh, do you, does the, 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 the CERC have input into that final risk register? How, how does that work? Yeah. They, uh, Carrie Schreier, maybe Carrie can talk a little bit more about that, and then I can add some at the end. Okay. Um, yeah, the senior officers are involved um, not only in um, the annual risk assessment. Um, we interview them every year, the auditor and I, um, and develop um, our you know list of emerging and changing risks and controls. And then also, um, once it's gone through the steering committee, um, the whole risk assessment process, we've we've interviewed people, we've done the surveys, we've. Um, checked in with the ERM work group and had our discussions. Um, we run that by the work group, and then after that, we send that up to um, the CERC committee to look at, and you know, with our uh, if we have any projects or things that we have recommendations on. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that information. I appreciate it. That's a that's a good question because one thing we try to do, or we you know, we is carry actually being our ERM coordinator is following up on these in between the meetings and actually this has been recent, I think the last two or three meetings, Carrie has come and given a presentation, sort of an update of where we are and making progress uh, on our um, on the ERM on campus. So it's actually part of that meeting that we have. So Jean Lucas is actually in charge of compliance for the entire campus and we sort of make presentations of different areas and the ERM is one of those. Right, and I, and I think you know other uh, campuses are looking at your model and and adopting it, and I think that they would benefit from understanding you know that relationship between the the ERM work group and the uh, the CERC, the the senior level uh, compliance ethics uh, risk committee. Well, actually, uh, Carrie mentioned that maybe we can. Put that in the. Uh, we'll send that out. I don't know how it would get out to people, but we have an org chart, which basically allows everything to flow through uh, Gene, who is our CEQA officer. So, in other words, all the issues that we have regarding red flag kind of issues, or if we have um, issues from the uh, audit committee, or issues from ERM, everything rolls up to Gene, which is a central point, which we have that one committee. So we're meeting on a quarterly basis. All of these things combined are being addressed at one time. Does that make sense? Excellent. Thank you so much, Ron. I really appreciate it. Carrie as well. Thank you. I can also make a plug for the My Managed Risk um, website. Uh, on that page, um, there's a UCSB site that has that org chart too. Perfect. OK. Provides a new avenue for communication. So. <coughs> I think I talked about this already, but I do think that this is one of the uh, nice things about having this. I know there's people here uh, on our campus, so I won't mention their names, but some that were really opposed to doing ERM at the very beginning really, uh, I wouldn't say enjoy, but really appreciate the opportunity to discuss risk for our campus and that it's become a very positive process. So it started off a bit rocky. I really think that this having a good organizational structure and also having the steering committee, and I think Carrie has done a great job of bringing the campus together, and I think with that, we have a pretty, if you mentioned ERM on our campus, uh, people would not throw rocks. I think they would be, uh, they would give good marks as to how they feel their concerns are being uh, both listened to and addressed on our campus. I think it's a positive thing, which is a good thing for uh, being able to address these things in a positive way. So it's, I think we have a good philosophy and I think it's been helpful. And one of the things we do in the ERM work group that um, seems to be effective for the entire group is that while everyone knows their own area of risk really well, they may not know, you know the larger perspective. So um, every uh, meeting we have one or two people give a presentation of their area's risks so, so that the entire work group can um, better inform themselves on, on the bigger picture. Maybe you can tell us some of the topics that they've done at the Office of Research. And yeah, we've had um, presentations from Student Affairs, Office of Research, um, Financial, IT. Um, coming up, we're going to have a presentation from Institutional Advancement and Athletics. Uh, in July, we're going to have a presentation from Academic Personnel and HR. So just to, uh, so we can all ha have an opportunity to discuss these different areas. 
what Carrie just mentioned, I think, is a really good idea that was um, Carrie came up with and other members of this uh, steering committee. <laughs> it seems like a good idea with people are really excited to be able to share their risk and concerns to the campus. In other words, this is a, a time where somebody has something that's going on in their area or their division that they can say, let's bring it up to the ERM steering committee, and they get a chance to provide a presentation and uh, to senior officers who are at this meeting as well <coughs> and uh, ask questions and, and be heard. Are there any questions at this point? Um, I have a question. This is Grace. Hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. How are you? Hi. Doing? Yeah, this is a really great presentation. Well, and you guys have a really great program. So, um, you know, uh, I always say we're either getting better or getting worse. So I was just wondering um, if there's uh, any new strategies or different strategies or tools or ideas that you have for um, uh, your ERM program moving forward. Um, well, I've added uh, student affairs to the ERM steering committee because we needed to get a broader representation of subject matter experts at the workhorse level. And um, going forward, I think we're going to have um, we're going to have the ERM work group look at the risk register in in a more proactive way. Like we look at it every year, and we're like, okay, well, we know what the risks are, and become more active in saying, you know, let's look at these ones and maybe people can give a report on the top ten risks or we can focus more as a group on those particular ones. Right. Um, I know that you really focused on the first year on, I'll say, mid, uh, you know, identifying, managing, mitigating, monitoring one area of, of risk and operation, that was the IT. And I just wondered if, I, I know IT is still massive for you and you're actually doing a lot of mitigation with implementing new systems. So I just wondered, is IT still at the top of the, the radar or are there other risks that you're focusing on mitigating? Besides everything every day that you're mitigating, but any, any targeted area. Yeah, I think a lot of them, Grace, are, are IT, I believe, is being, uh, we have a, a large effort on our campus to address that. I think one of the other issues that came up before, too, was lab safety and suffered actually from the UCLA incident, but just from concerns on our campus about making sure that we actually had uh, proper staffing and that we were actually properly trained. So those issues came up independent and actually were brought up as part of our risk register. Uh, there's also uh, issues have come up in the past regarding um, uh, managing youth activities, mm -hmm. and also there's been some issues of Office of Research that have come up as well. So right now our top four risks are uh, budget impairment, um, uh, faculty and staff recruitment and retention, deferred maintenance, and associated with deferred maintenance is equipment facility malfunction. So those are our top four risks. And um, Are those the top four with the least controls? Correct. Res the weakest controls, okay, yeah. Um, hi, this is Laurel from Berkeley. Could you comment on where email security falls in your rankings? Email security? Yes. For example, Berkeley is using Bmail now, which is essentially Gmail, which has very little controls on it, is my understanding. Um, on our campus, we're not using that, so I it see. has come to the level of an enterprise-wide risk. Um, that risk would fall in the department level. Um, if we uh, were to start using an email system that has poor security would probably uh, show up on the risk register, but it's not there right now. Okay. Hey, mm -hmm. Carrie, this is Cheryl Lloyd. Is, e is email security um, a part of your um, IT framework because you're looking at your whole IT program? That's one of your issues? Yeah, there's actually, Cheryl, we're actually in the process of looking at a new uh, email system. And that's part of the, I would say that's part of our system structure. So we're looking here at doing Microsoft 360 uh, for the campus. And I think the students are uh, just about getting that implemented and also they're discussing getting that out to the campus here maybe by the end of the year. But 
what I'm asking is that email is not a separate risk. It's, it's part of your IT risk and something you look at at a broader scope, right? Yeah, that's right. And so, and one more thing, maybe I can just add to that, uh, Grace. And I think Terry discussed this, but we just wanted to be uh, made more clear with that. Is that I think one of the things that we can improve upon is that when we do this annually, we're going to be in use in those quarterly meetings with our with SECO, with Gene, uh, quarterly reports on our progress. So then it's not like we're just looking at these things once a year. We're looking at them every quarter, and then the steering committee can review it before it gets up to uh, it gets up to the executive vice chancellor every quarter or CEQA officer. So I think that's an improvement that we want to make sure we keep more on top of our plans to make sure that we're just making sure has anything changed and are we still making progress. So I think that's an improvement we're trying to work on. And another one of my goals for the year on program for the year is just to build better relationships with the people like the auditor, the controller, or the uh, compliance officers, and um, the people in my steering committee um, so that we can have a really robust discussion on an ongoing basis about these risks. Excellent. Okay. So here's, uh, here's another slide about this, uh, this people looking at an elephant. But I think this is sort of what I talked about already at the beginning. And this is sort of the good answer to the question about um, you already know what the risks are. People do know what the risks are from their own perspective, but ERM helps <coughs> develop and uh, formulate the risk from the entire campus perspective. Increased consistency in communication of risk. I'm starting to lose my voice here, so maybe uh, Terry can do the next two or three slides. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Do you want to do? Uh, yeah. So basically, it's just uh, ERM provides an opportunity for you to to break down those divisional silos and just say, hey, you know, ERM is a campus-wide thing, and can you tell me what's going on with your risks, and maybe provide your perspective on risks that may not be in your area, but you've had conversations with the other people on campus. And one of the things that you hear in the um, ERM conferences is that you need to make ERM a strategic, you know, take, take your strategic view of ERM. And um, I think what that, the takeaway from that is that you need to really become um, proactive in talking about risks and what are your risks and saying, okay, these are our strategic goals, um, what's getting in the way of that, and um, becoming better at communicating the positive outcomes of ERM. Um, you know, like this is our mission and this is our vision and this, you know, deferred maintenance risk. You know, if you take it out of context, it's like, okay, well, our buildings are falling down, big deal. But um, if you put it in the context of we want to be an excellent, you know, teaching uh, institution, then if you look at that and you say, well, you can't have an excellent teaching institution if your building is not adequate, then it just gives a little bit more context. And ERM, it, it, it really improves governance. Um, and I think, Grace, you've said this before, that ERM is it's just good management. It's looking at what could get in the way of you achieving your objectives and being proactive about working on those and saying, you know, providing some assurance to you know, ourselves and our stakeholders that we are looking ahead and, and managing the things that may get in the way of us achieving our objectives. Um, okay, so this is a slide that talks about uh, how much cost, uh, I guess, or how much, how much has been saved using ERM, but I, I, I like to think about it maybe a little bit differently. I think it is good that we have saved money uh, with ERM, but I also think it's just that it's, there's many things that can't be described by, you know, or defined by money, like our reputational risk. I know Grace has talked about that before, and I just think it has it's one it's it's a really good uh, management tool, 
and it really helps the campus prepare for risk. And I think there's a lot of other benefits besides just the, uh, I know it's important to save money, that certainly in, in our climate is important, but I think it has many other benefits as well. And I think it's just, uh, has really improved the way that we can manage risk here on our campus. Any questions at this point? Okay. So some of these others, as I go through the next three or four slides, I think we've talked about some of these already. And so unless somebody has a question, we're um, not going to really go into too depth. So I think here we talk about the issue of timeliness, conciseness, and flexibility. And I think this is an area where we can improve upon, and I think we are by re reviewing our plans every quarter and then providing that information to our SECO officer, Gene Lucas. And I think that will be an, an improvement uh, to our existing system. I think we're doing a good job annually. It's just how do we make it, break it down into more meaningful uh, steps where we can use it here on our campus and keep it in the uh, forefront of our senior leadership. Use information to identify and manage risks. You want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, the ERM information system, I, I, I think everyone may be familiar with it. Um, it's a really good tool to just get a snapshot of different um, dashboards that have been created. And um, if you want to create your own dashboard, if you have metrics that you want to follow, um, you can work with um, UC Risk Services and they can help you on that. Um, it, it's nice that you can, like, for instance, go in and you can see how many vehicles um, have been in accidents on your campus as compared to other campuses and, and you know, not that we're competitive or anything, but you can always say, hey, our vehicle, you know, uh, program uh, has done a really good job, then maybe we should find out what UCSB is doing to, you know, prevent accidents or, you know, like Irvine, they have a great workers' comp um, injury and il illness prevention program. So, you know, we can see that in the dashboards and say, hey, let's, let's pull the best practices out from from their kind of stuff. So, and it's a good way to, to uh, relay information to your management about the trends that are going on across campus. And here's some <coughs> additional questions uh, one may have when implementing an ERM program. So how do you go about identifying the institutional risk? What's the process? How to integrate the ERM with existing risk compliance? and audit functions and how do we monitor our risk. And we'll talk a little bit about what our strategy here is at UCSB briefly. I think we've talked about it uh, at, in, at great length, but we'll just do it quickly here. Again, we have an ERM uh, work group, which is our cross-functional groups of representatives from across the campus. We use these meetings to identify and evaluate risk. They're sort of the core to our, uh, core to our program, and their involvement is really instrumental in helping us identify and discuss risk. And also, as Carrie mentioned, they actually make presentations on risk to their own division. And they do all the evaluation of, what is, um, of what's occurring on our campus. As far as collaboration, one of the things we found at the very beginning, and I, actually I think it's worked out quite well now, is when we were first getting some direction uh, from, say, Cheryl Vaca's area, and that was coming through our auditor, and then we we're receiving some uh, direction from Grace. It was a little bit confusing here on campus, but then we put this sort of this org chart that Terry will pass out, and, and in my own opinion, it became quite clear to the campus of the importance of all the components and how, by working together, they actually really leverage each other quite well. And so we have a good relationship with uh, our uh, director, our audit director, and he works well with the ERM coordinator, and they do a lot of their interviews together. They develop their surveys together. And also, we have another person who works on compliance for the executive vice chancellor, and they all coordinate together. And so the good thing about having them coordinate is it provides less confusion for the campus. So they don't get interviewed by the audit director one week, and the next week have a different uh, you know, survey from the ERM coordinator, and so that can cause confusion. But by having them work together, I think it provides more clarity to the campus and also reduces duplication uh, as, as we gather these information for risk. And I'll just make a plug uh, while I'm here for 
um, I, I know you've been encouraged to have the internal auditors coordinate with the ERM coordinators. Um, but what we found, especially this year, is that um, because the internal auditor and I, we got our questions together ahead of time, decided who we were going to interview together. And we didn't interview everyone together um, because sometimes there's sensitive information that you want to relay to the auditor, but most of the interviews we did together. And um, we found that what Robert, the internal auditor, told me is that he got better information because I was asking questions from a different perspective. I just wasn't asking, you know, what are auditable areas and what do you think you need to get looked at. It was more uh, like a bigger picture. Just tell me about your risks and, you know, let's talk about these things that are on your uh, area of the risk register and how they changed. And it was uh, better information for him as well as um, for me. So. Very good. Thank you, Carrie. Okay. And the next slide just talks a little bit about our own uh, our own structure here. We talked already that we have ERM work group committee meetings uh, every quarter. They review the annual risk surveys and the interviews. Then we have the smaller steering committee, which we believe is helpful because it's a smaller group. They can meet and they actually help prepare the agendas and strategies for the ERM work group. And then the updated risk registers submitted to them as well. Okay. The future of the ERM on our campus. Do you want to talk a little bit about this, Carrie? Or? Um, yeah. So I think we're when we first started out, um, our risk register talked a lot about operational risks, um, risks that we were familiar with, and we hadn't really um, expanded to look at the the strategic risks, and um, you know, we were sort of timid about it. But you know, you got to start somewhere, and people were comfortable talking about that, and so we did. And and this year, um, we took a more um, we took our strategic academic plan, and we talked to um, the academic senate, and we just said, let's talk about strategic risks. And so, and we asked those strategic risk uh, we asked the questions in a different way. We said, okay, these are our strategic risks. And how do these, um, or strategic goals, I'm sorry, how do these risks prevent you from achieving your strategic goals? And so because we asked the question in a different way, we got, um, I believe the information we got back was much better. And so I think we're maturing our program in, in such a way that we're, we're more able to tie our strategic goals into our risk management process. Then these are just the, um, the UC or ERM program goals, and we would like to thank the Office of the President, Grace, for uh, and Grace for helping us get this started. And I think we have a good collaborative effort with uh, Carrie on our campus and the support we get. And um, I think we've had you know a bit of success with this, and I think it's well received on our campus. And I really, just from a, uh, you know my own professional perspective, I think it's a, a good uh, project to become involved in, and I think it provides really good benefits to the campus, and I find it quite worthwhile. So, are there any questions? This is, this is Ash. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, the question I have is, uh, in terms of uh, prioritizing risks, where does the EPL or uh, EL uh, place uh, in terms of risks? Because nationally, it seems like that's a growing area, claims-wise. So, where do you place uh, within your system? Priority-wise, it hasn't risen to the level of being on our risk register. No. Oh, it hasn't. Okay. I think so it's somewhere. What I think that's going to make in my opinion is they'll vary by campus, because we've actually been able to use a lot of uh, be smart about safety money to look at preventive areas for employment liability uh, that are run through the HR uh, department, and actually. <laughs> We've been quite successful on employment liability, at least as our uh, liability has gone down over the last several years due to these programs. Thank that's, you. I mean, that's important to note that the enterprise risk management program, it, it's uh, the risk assessment is very important. But you know, again, going back to your COSO slide, it's the it's really the risk mitigation is where the you know is really where the action <laughs> happens. And that's right. what are we doing about the risk. So I think like, you know, the Be Smart About Safety program, 
a lot of the other uh, initiatives that we have, that's, that's really the heart, or I'll say the muscle, right, of the ERM program. And this is Cheryl Lloyd. Um, I want to uh, emphasize what Car Carrie indicated about um, if you take a look at your dashboards and you look at uh, across the system how campuses are performing, you can see, um, say, a decline in the number of EPL claims for UC Santa Barbara. And that would be when you would pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, UC Santa Barbara, what are you doing? And they actually are doing some pretty innovative uh, things in the area of uh, prevention of EPL claims. They are a smaller campus, so they're not going to have the number of claims that, say, a larger campus would. But they certainly, um, when their numbers started to tick up, they did address them and bring them down. Great. Thank you. Hey, hi, Ron. This is Luana Putney from Compliance. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, thanks for that. That was a great talk. Uh, I had a question about how uh, how will you involve the CERC, the um, Campus Ethics and Compliance Risk Committee, headed by Gene? How will you involve that group in the strategic ERM plans uh, if, if you guys are developing those? Um, well, it's the same plan. We're just taking a more strategic view. Um, so we interview the senior officers uh, in the annual risk assessment process, and we just ask them questions with a more strategic framework. Okay. So we get better quality information. And you're looking at you're looking at um, the vision and the the goals and the vision for the campus for their strategic goals and what and what could prevent those from being achieved. Right. The uh, the academic plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thanks. Well, if there's no more questions, are there any more questions? Okay, if not, then I would like to just thank everyone for the opportunity to uh, have a chance to talk to you a little bit about our program. I'd like to thank Carrie for all of her work and leadership that she's provided here on our campus. So if you have any questions, I think she's a good one to call and talk to. Uh, so with that, and I'd also like to thank Grace for all Thank you, Grace, for all your support you've given to our campus. And that's all I had. All right. Thank you very much, Ron. This has been a great presentation, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank, Thank you, everybody, you. for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope to see you again at future ERM at the Box webinars. Thank, Thank you. you.